So this is my new toy. Um, this is a arcade box. Pretty cool, huh? It is a Pandora X treasure box, apparently. Multi-button switch. My well, lid wasn't closed properly. Micro switches. They're all clones, but they're not original things. But inside, they're all proper micro switch buttons proper micro switch joystick and there is the motherboard it works extremely well I'm very happy with it and uh, I'll sh there'll be some footage after this of me playing a game and <laughs> see this is the box when it's working Max is playing Street Fighter 2 E Honda fighting E Honda Wait, As you can see, it lights up. I'm really impressed pimple. with the quality. The build quality is great, and everything he has is fantastic. A black pimple. Oh, he killed you. Well, I've got a new games console. It's called a Pandora Box X. It's an arcade massive thing, and this is the first game I decided to play on it. For you guys, anyway. X Men vs Street Fighter. I'm not sure I like that enhanced graphics. I might have to disable that. This is gonna be a quick capture. I can play this game very well, but I'm not gonna play too long. I'll have him, and I'll have him. Basically, their moves are exactly the same. So, so adding the retro pry to the Pandora box part one is removing the old Pandora box thing. Easy enough to do. Let's use that old box to hold it open because it doesn't go back far enough. Now, I'm going to take photos of these. That's the order they are there. And that's where they're plumbed in on that one and that one. Now, I'm going to have to use a continuity tester to put them all in the right place. It's going to take a while. As you can see, I believe these are arranged, so one row is player one, and the other row is player two, and the additional buttons. Start and select, start and select. And of course, the four-way comes off of here. Now, unfortunately, black appears to be the common. So common ground is one of the black lines on both sides, so I'm going to take that to be the top one there. Get a continuity tester and I'll prove that, but I'm 99% sure black is the common one. It's the only one with two rails on each side, if you can see that. It's not a very big loom. Um, I've dealt with fruit machine light looms before and, well, this is minor in comparison. This is tiny. Um, I will separate these out. I will undo this clip them away, remove the cable ties, clip them into player one and player two. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to make use of this as well. If you see this here, this is a light strip. Now this is pretty cool. It's automatically controlled. It just requires five volts, but I think it'll run off three looking at it. So I might try it on the three volt outline but it might stress the high. I'll have to see, I might have to get an additional thing. But one thing I can do is I can set up this power switch here as well. This has got a nice little thing here. So I can clip those out. I can pop the power switch into this. And my idea is just to use this connector and put it on top of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO after I've put all the cables in the correct slotting for it. And then looking at the common ground, I might have to solder together the ground because the ground on this side and the ground on this side from what I'm seeing from the wiring by just following the wire of my eyes is two separate grounds here. Well, there are multiple grounds on the GPIO, so it's going to be easy enough to put them into two different grounds because it is a common ground on the GPIO. They're all the same. But yeah. Oh, and I did notice one thing. There's a little tiny crack next to one of the screws. That upsets me. It's annoying, isn't it? It's not a big crack. 
I can put some glue in that later to stop it spreading. But yeah, and uh, here's the board I took out. Um, I have experimented with this board. I have tried connecting to it via that micro USB, but I don't have the correct software. I tried null modem. I tried RS-232 over that, but not working. Uh, the SD card goes in there. There's an Ethernet port there, which I guess you could solder on. There's everything for the Ethernet port, and the tracks are complete. Um, there are some control chips missing, so the I don't think I think you I think for the Ethernet, looking at, following the tracks from there, if you see, it's missing the control chips for the Ethernet, so I don't think it would work. Um, but yeah, looking at the rest of this board. Uh, it's just a quad core Android board, really. It really isn't capable of doing the 3D, and it's lower power than a Raspberry Pi 3. It's probably about a third the speed, judging by what I could do with it. And the fact that the games are hardwired and hard programmed onto that SD chip there and the one on the back. So they can't really do anything with the two 2D games. Very annoying. But yeah, that was just in there that way around. I can see if I can utilize the speaker as well, but I'm probably going to need a sound card. It might be a G sound out on the GPIO, but with a game controller on it, I doubt that's going to happen. But anyway, the next part will be setting up the Retro Pi and then wiring all this in and getting all the pinouts sorted on that. And then I've got a plastic case for the Retro Pi, for the Pi. I'm going to mount the plastic case in here and glue the plastic case or screw the plastic case down. I may have to put some new screw holes in this. But somebody said that the HDMI lines up fairly well with these three ports here. So the power, HDMI, and the sound, the analog sound out, line up fairly well on the Raspberry Pi with these three ports. Other than that, I'll have a pretty much the same as I've got now. And if I can use the power switch, that's fantastic as well. I think the switch is a rocker switch, so um, I, have to, I have to sort out the type of switch we have and have to change its style from push button to rocker for the power switch on the on it. But yeah, I think I can use all of this. It's going to be fun finding out. Oh God, look at that! I'm dropping junk. I'm dropping junk everywhere. Cool. And uh, well, let's see how it goes. As you can see, it's as I suspected. Um, the entire cabling from one side is here. There's the common ground. And unfortunately, this other black one is another signal cable. I might put a dot of Tipex or something on that or a piece of tape around it. And uh, the other button, the others are really easy to identify because they're all color coded. And yep, one side is definitely one set of colors and the other side, the other set. Now, what I should have really done is recorded the order they were in. Well, I've got a photo of it earlier and made myself a map to put it back together, but I don't really intend to put this back together. If somebody wanted to do that, there is all the information in these two videos. You can capture screenshots of the order the cables are in and where they go to here. It's all fairly obvious. And for the other side. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I was right about the common ground being the top two. And the ground for the left side is not the same for the ground for the right side. So they're not common. The ground is common per button cluster or per controller, logical controller. Uh, well, I guess there's no such thing as a physical controller, but it's a logical controller as far as electronics is concerned. And there's the other one. Yeah, easy enough. I'll now take all the pins out of there. Uh, I've only got some twist ties. I haven't got any cable ties. I've got a whole box for a thousand somewhere, but I can't remember where they are. But yeah, I'll uh, twist tie this up, take them all out, and then uh, get to finding a way to label this. What I might do, if you can see on the side here, I might sit down with the map and with a very small pin, just write player one up, player two down, la da la da la, on there. I know it's all completely reconfigurable once you're in RetroPie, but I like perfection. I got it working, didn't I, Max? Yeah, how did I, how do I get that? So look, Press here start. it is. And we're playing uh, anything. And look, that? the graphics are perfect. No fuzzy, muddy, fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy graphics. No overly drawn, old, old retro style graphics. Whoa! Ah! 
And both arcade sticks are working. Okay. As you can probably see, I'm playing with one hand here, so probably won't be too good. But yeah, both arcade sticks working. And Max, let's show them what's inside. At the moment, my wife's keyboard is connected to it. But there we go. Raspberry Pi, Pandora box wiring loom. Oh my god! GPIO via the same ICA header that we had. I haven't connected up the um, other stuff. I'm gonna buy a, gonna buy something which can power the lights because I really enjoyed having those. And I might work out how to put the speaker on. I think there's a there's a GPIO header that you can put the speaker on, but I'm not really fussed about that at the moment, to be honest. Hey, I made the GPIO header speaker. No, but yeah, I haven't fixed it down yet, but it's on a riser. So around the back, if we have a look here, you can see how the ports work and they do fit quite well. But you know, it's, it's just the way it is. So yeah, two arcade sticks connected to the Raspberry Pi and there is zero delay. Absolutely zero delay on the, uh, let me unplug that. We no longer need that. There's zero place. delay on the input from the, the keyboards. Place. You have found a <laughs> Max has actually managed to find a place where the alien can't hit him. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I can leave myself there from overnight. There we go, as you can see, works perfectly. I gotta say the there is no delay at all, and I've got it plugged into the correct place on the television for the games console connection, which I use for the PlayStation. And there's no no, de no delay at all. But I'm really impressed with it. It's working very, very well.